Good morning. Today is Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. Happy birthday to my brother, Jonathan Whitman. In Jewish law, there are several ways that something can come into my possession. I can receive something as a gift. I can receive something as a loan. I can purchase something and it comes into my possession, or I can inherit something. Something can come to me as an inheritance. Now, each one of these paths is unique. There are different rules in Jewish law, a different meaning assigned to each one of them, different responsibilities. So it is significant that the Torah specifically describes the Torah itself as an inheritance. The famous verse near the end of the Torah, Torah Tziva Lanu Moshe, the Torah that we have, was commanded to us by God through Moshe. It is an inheritance inherited by the congregation of Jacob, the congregation of Israel. We have the Torah as our inheritance. It's interesting that the Torah should say that. It's a curious declaration for the Torah to make because... Actually, in another place, we refer to the Torah given to the Jewish people as a gift. We refer to the holiday of Shavuos as Zman Matan Torasenu, the time of the giving of the Torah, but the word Matan is the same word for Matana. It includes giving a gift to someone. So we need to understand what is it that's being communicated by referring to the Torah in some places as an inheritance. And this comes up at the beginning of our Torah portion, where we see God's long-awaited, momentous promise, excuse me, promise is about to be fulfilled. God says to Moshe at the beginning of our parsha, and Marla B'nai Yisrael, this is what you should say to the children of Israel, Ani Hashem, I am God. I'm going to take you out of the persecution and slavery of Egypt. And I will bring you to the land. And I will give it to you as a morasha, an inheritance. Now we're talking about the land of Israel which is being referred to as an inheritance. That's very interesting because the verse itself seems to have an internal contradiction. One more time. Venosati osa, I will, I will give it to you. I am giving it to you. That word means gift, matana, morasha, as an inheritance. So which one is it? Is the land of Israel being given to us as a gift? Is it being given to us as an inheritance, and especially because it seems like it's neither. The first parcel of land that came into Jewish possession was through a purchase. Avraham, and we discussed the significance of this and the details of this before, Avraham purchased a burial place for Sarah from Ephron Hachiti for 400 silver coins. So, which is it? Let's take the land of Israel. Is it a gift? Is it a purchase? Is it an inheritance? <clears throat> Today I want to share with you two layers of significance, two approaches to the significance of understanding the land of Israel as coming into our possession as an inheritance. Our rabbis in the Midrash explain this terminology, and again, um, referring lessons both from the Torah as an inheritance and the land of Israel as an inheritance, and they're going to work both, it will work both ways. Our rabbis in the Midrash explain this through a play on words. What does it mean the Torah is for us an inheritance, the land of Israel is for us an inheritance? It's through a play on words. It is similar letters, 
sound, the, the, the sound of the letters is similar between two dissimilar words. So you have two words that are dissimilar. They don't mean the same thing at all, but the letters are close. So the sound of the word is close, and the rabbis will interpret one can actually mean the other. Now, they are not suggesting, the rabbis are not suggesting that there is a... Um, uh, an emendation, a correction in the text. No, the rabbis are simply saying the way we interpret this word is by seeing how it sounds in a different word that is similar sounding but a different meaning. By the way, there's a literary expression for this. It's called clang association. A clang association is when I compare two words that don't mean the same, but they sound the same. So, our rabbis say, Al tikri morasha ela muurasa. Don't read the word as if it is morasha, which means inheritance. Rather, read the word as if it is muurasa. Almost the same letters, kind of a similar sound, clang association. If you study literary criticism, morasha means inheritance. Muurasa means betrothed, betrothed to be married, engage one who is engaged to be married to another. Well, okay, the two words sound kind of alike, but their meaning is completely different. What in the world do our rabbis mean to suggest that we should understand the word morasha as if it is written urasa? Rabbi Eli Monk explains that this strange word association relating to the Torah is as if the Torah is saying to us, speaking to us, collectively as the Jewish people, and to every one of us as individuals. The Torah is saying to us, I don't want to be like an inheritance that is old, conjuring up the image of an elderly relative who sits quietly in the corner and at family gatherings, family members approach with a respectful greeting before moving on to more lively conversation elsewhere. The Torah says to us, I want to be like your beloved for whom you feel passion with whom you want to be close at every moment and in every place, and for whom you would sacrifice everything. I want to be, says the Torah to us, relevant and involved in every area of your life. Not just the recipient of an occasional obligatory visit or greeting. We say this in the Shema. The Torah should be for us, with us, when we're sitting at home, when we're traveling on the road, when we go to sleep, when we get up. Every place, every moment, the Torah has something to say. In this analysis, Morasha, an inherit, which usually means inheritance, is understood to be the opposite of the implication of inheritance, something that is continually with us, that is contemporary and uh, uh, exciting and about which we are passionate and involved at every moment. I think today especially this is our grand challenge to study Torah as it relates to every single facet of life. Yes, of course, Shabbos. Yes, of course, keeping kosher. Yes, of course, prayer. Yes, of course, holidays. But also economics and health and medical ethics, and public policy, and personal morality. Everything in the world, everything in our life, can be illuminated and uplifted by the insights and values of the Torah. And the truth is, that is really the goal of everything that you and I are doing together. That's one layer to understanding Torah as mu'urasa, morasha. Allow me to share a second. And this relates more 
to the land of Israel, being referred to as Morasha, an inheritance. The Talmud understands from our verse at the beginning of our Torah portion, Ve'era, where the, to- where the land of Israel is described as being our inheritance, the rabbis in the Talmud understand a legal matter that is a consequence of that appellation. And that is that the land of Israel, which they would only reach 40 years later, the land of Israel was divided among those who left Israel. Egypt, not among those who entered the land of Israel. In other words, the Jews, the Jewish people, inherited the land of Israel while they were still in Egypt. Now that's not only a legal statement that has a number of legal consequences which the Talmud goes into, it's a bit technical, we'll leave that to the side for now. It is also a very important psychological statement. Because having already inherited a portion in the land of Israel while they were still in Egypt, still slaves in Egypt, every single Jewish person traveled through the desert toward their own land. Not just toward a land they would later receive, there's a famous quote of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to gather wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather inspire them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. Conferring the land of Israel as an inheritance in our Torah portion, achieves precisely this, to create the yearning and the vision for every Jew in Egypt to reach home. And this must have had a profound impact on motivating them to continue this journey despite the delays and despite the setbacks and despite the frustrations of the journey through the long 40 years of the desert. But this was a vehicle through which they were inspired and maintained that energy until they reached their goal, until they reached home. My friends, I want to wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.